Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do, Polaris Terrain Domination, and by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. In this special segment, we're going to pull the sheets off a piece of new technology we are pretty sure is going to boggle your mind. This new technology is called the Yamaha Performance Damper, and it's being installed on as many as 20,000 new automobiles every month. When I was first exposed to the Performance Damper, I was frankly skeptical. However, this technology was presented to me by one of the snowmo industry's most credible and respected individuals. I have known Chris Reed from Yamaha Motor Corporation for almost 25 years. His insights into snowmobiles and understanding of snowmobile technology is outstanding. So rather than attempt to explain what the performance damper is, we're going to let Chris tell the story. Well, initially, performance dampers uh, came about as an application for automobile. Uh, the engineer who designed the performance damper, uh, Mr. Sawai, Seiji Sawai, before he came up with the idea for the performance damper, had worked on a project that is now um, a standard equipment on several models out there. Probably the most commonly known one would be the Toyota 4Runner. Every vehicle has a frequency, a natural frequency, that it inherently vibrates and runs at. There's resonance in that vehicle. And their idea was to control this resonance through a system. And the best way to control the resonance is to take its frequency and the decay rate of that frequency and increase the decay rate. Okay, it's nice to know automobiles benefit from the performance damper, but what exactly is this device and how does it work? If you look at the performance damper internally, it looks like any normal shock absorber. When you take a deeper look into it, it works almost the opposite of a normal shock absorber. It's able to respond to very high frequency, low amplitude inputs. The saturation point of the oil inside the damper is such that it can move very small amounts very quickly. If you apply wider amplitude, slower frequency inputs into the shock, as what would happen in suspension, if, as hitting a, a, a bump and having a stroke, it moves much slower to the point where a performance damper, if you were to compress it, and it only moves maybe 20 millimeters maximum, could take upwards of 24 hours to come back to its neutral state. I press Chris to tell me what the single largest benefit is of the performance damper when mounted on a snowmobile. If I had to say there was one single benefit out of the performance damper on a snowmobile, it would be in bumpy corners or corners that have a bit of chatter to them and, and, and the ability to go through a corner without having to counter steer, without having to compensate for ski lift. I'm not saying it takes all this stuff away, but it does make it better. The whole idea a snowmobile might be flexing has twisted my understanding of what the performance damper actually does. When Chris explained all vehicles produce resonance, including bridges and buildings, the idea behind the performance damper finally sunk in. This inherent frequency of vibration is not a flex problem, it's a reality with anything that moves. Any one of these vehicles will have a frequency in its natural state, but they all have a frequency. It doesn't matter what level that frequency is, the performance damper will take any vehicle at whatever frequency it vibrates at, however it resonates, however stiff or not stiff it is, whatever is getting past the suspension systems through the springs and the dampers into the chassis, it will take this energy that's resonating throughout this vehicle that needs to go somewhere and it will take its decay rate and increase it. In other words, chop that resonating frequency down so it becomes much shorter. Does the performance damper uh, being used on a sofa mean that there's something inherently wrong in the vehicle? No, the performance damper can be used on any vehicle. It's used on helicopters. It's used in buildings and bridges in Japan and construction and architecture. Performance dampers have a place in engineering. It's controlling frequencies, unwanted vibration, unwanted amplitudes going through a chassis. Snowmobiles aren't any different than a car or that bridge in Japan. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. This winter, experience snowmobile heaven. I think it's kind of cool one of the two performance dampers used in a snowmobile application is exposed, mounted on the rear bumper. Yamaha's experimented with mounting locations for the performance damper and determined the very best locations to get maximum benefit. 
There's been a lot of trial and error experimentation with performance dampers. Again, it started on cars. We've also done the same thing with the snowmobile application as to where you should mount it and why. And it really does connect to what it's doing. But we've found they work best in pairs and they work best in the forward and aft position of the vehicle. Uh, we've also found that it, they tend to have a bit more effect if we mount them cross-platform as opposed to longitudinally in the frame. So on the snowmobiles, we've chosen to mount it out back. Um, we could put it on the tunnel, but the most convenient spot is to mount it to the rear grab bar. And it should be noted, these performance dampers mount rigidly. There's no heim joints, there's no bushings, there's no movement in the shock. Interestingly, Chris feels the effect of the performance damper is most tangible when the snowmobile is ridden hard and the rider takes the vehicle to his or her limits. We're all different in the speed that we're comfortable reaching with the vehicle. And I found personally that the harder I'll push the performance damper, the more it gives me back. And it's your own comfort level. It's where you start getting into an area where you're having to compensate for the bumps coming at you, for the speed that you're going into the corner, how you react to ski lift, how it makes you feel. The performance damper will give you more confidence at that point. But we all have different levels that we ride at, different comfort levels. We drilled down with Chris to understand better how the performance damper absorbs energy, turning it into heat, and to clarify just how incredibly firm, yet still movable, the performance damper is when it's doing its job. The performance damper, when you look at a cutaway, it looks very, very close to what you would consider in a normal suspension shock absorber. But the reality is it almost works the opposite way. In other words, it's able to move very quickly with a very small amount of input. But when you give it a lot of input, if you were to push it, try to push it an inch, the resistance that it gives you back is incredible. And even though it's held in a centered point by pressure both sides, negative spring and a gas-charged floating piston, if you were to push it out of that center, it could take over 24 hours for that force to bring it back to center. So its reaction to large movement Large amplitude force, big flex in the frame is very slow, but its ability to react to vibration, to real high frequency, uh, quick amplitude inputs is amazingly fast. We wondered if it was possible to build adjustability into the performance damper, like a compression adjustable shock or an adjustable steering damper. Turns out, we need to constantly frame our understanding of the performance damper with the reality of high-frequency vibration, not the kind of movement a suspension shock damps. This resonance, although tiny in actual measurement, can affect handling, and more importantly, the feel of your snowmobile when cornering or riding bumps. The shock itself, oftentimes, I think its maximum movement would be about 20 millimeters. But in application, it very seldom moves more than one or two millimeters. And that would be at more low amplitude movements, in other words, flex in the frame. And most of its benefit doesn't come from controlling flex. It comes from controlling all the vibration and the, and the resonance that's going on in the frame. That resonance oftentimes means you're gonna measure the movement in the shock by microns. It's very small movement, but it's moving very quickly at a very high frequency. The performance damper is not flash in the pan technology. It's been around and it has proven itself in other motorized applications. Yamaha is serious about its benefits for snowmobiles. Yeah, it's interesting how performance damper came to snowmobile. The engineer who was in charge of developing it on the automobile side was recently transferred to snowmobile and it was Seji Sawai who suggested we try it on a snowmobile. We didn't go seeking it. We didn't even know it existed to be quite honest with you. But when Seji explained what it did and the success they had in automobile, we decided we should try it on the snowmobile. That was three seasons ago. This past season, we've given early deposit customers a set of performance dampers on their what we call CBU units, but the Japanese built Yamaha snowmobiles a uh, set of performance dampers to try on their apexes or vectors. Ultimately, everyone who sees the performance damper wants to know if Yamaha is going to make it standard equipment on future snowmobiles. We are looking really with the performance damper is kind of growing it. It's not something that everybody's going to get right away. We want to manage our expectations with performance damper. The last thing I'd want to do is say the whole world needs performance dampers and it's going to change your riding experience night and day. It's not that kind of thing. It's subtle. It definitely makes a difference. It will improve the handling of the vehicle. 
but it may not do it to the level that some people would expect if we made it readily available on everything. So we are doing a, what we call a soft launch. We're, we've included it on some of our machines this year. We want to hear the feedback. We want to see how the market reacts to that. If it's as favorable as I personally think it's going to be, then yes, we will put it into select models as production. Now you know what the performance damper actually is. Keep your eye on future Yamaha snowmobiles. You may see more of the performance damper in the not too distant future. Closed captioning of Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. It's not too often a sled comes along that has so much new stuff going on, there literally isn't enough time in a standard Snow Tracks test ride to cover it all. The Axis is a 100% new design built from 97% new parts. So unfortunately, I just can't cover all the cool new features and changes Polaris has made to this platform. So today, I'm going to focus on what I think are the four most important attributes of this sled. Ergonomics, ride, power, and handling. Polaris released two versions of the Axis this season, the Pro X and the Pro S. I've spent considerable time on both and I found, without question, the Pro S is the sled for me. And since I like premium gadgets and cool graphics, I requested the 60th Anniversary Edition. The 60th Anniversary Edition includes a painted tunnel and rails, custom graphics, a small seat bag, and Polaris's new LCD gauge package with GPS and Bluetooth built in. To say this is a cool piece of technology wouldn't even come close to covering it. This is the coolest new piece of technology ever found on a snowmobile. But you'll have to read about that one online. It's time for us to dig a little deeper into this sled, and we're gonna start with something every person who's ridden it, even guys loyal to other brands, have unanimously agreed is absolutely excellent. Ergonomics. This sled just fits. It's that simple. From the first second you climb over its tallish seat, everything just feels like it is where it should be. Foot placement is natural and comfortable, and when you reach for the handlebars, they're exactly where you thought they would be. The seat is wide at the back and narrow up front. This excellent combination allows for comfortable cruising with your butt further back, but when you move forward into a more aggressive position, it also makes for easy side-to-side -side transitions in the twisties. So we've established it's an ergonomic dream come true, but what about the ride? Polaris's Axis has some stiff competition with Skidoo's R-Motion. The question is, how does this thing stack up? A new aluminum crank replaces the old steel unit and saves huge weight. A redesigned suspension geometry makes the sled more forgiving for a wider range of riders, and a sweet piggyback Walker Evans shock sits out in the open where it's ultra easy to access. With the spring set correctly for the rider's weight and all the clickers set to nearly full soft, the rush ride's amazing. We already know its variable caster front end is near IFS perfection, and we feel it finally has an adequate partner with the Axis rear. It's only on the biggest, sharpest hits that the rear end seems to get overwhelmed. Its rising rate action helps soften the impact, but it just doesn't feel as composed as the R motion on the biggest of hits. To say Polaris' new Cleanfire 800HO mill has changed the game doesn't even come close to the truth. The game's over. There is no competition. This is the sickest 800 we've ever pulled the trigger on. Its lightweight crank allows the engine to rev almost instantaneously, and a substantial increase in horsepower results in behemoth torque and rocket ship top end. An electronic oil pump offers light throttle pull and excellent oil economy, as well as overall cleaner operation. And finally, a more direct intake track allows the engine to breathe more efficiently. I can't emphasize this enough. These changes result in the most overachieving 800 we've ever ridden. Every single person who takes a spin on this sled says exactly the same thing. This motor is sick, in a good way. 
finally, let's talk about the most impressive attribute of the new Axis Pro S chassis, handling. All the ergonomic goodness, smooth ride, and awesome power in the world mean nothing if the sled won't go around a corner. But not to fear, this one does, like it's on rails. Motor mounts have been integrated right into the engine cases this season. This means the motor can be mounted as low as physically possible inside the chassis, which dramatically improves the overall CG of the sled. The riding position has also been moved further forward, so mass centralization is greatly improved and more of the rider's weight is over the front arm of the skid and over the skis. At the end of the day, you're left with a sled that corners incredibly flat, is entirely precise, and yet still maintains excellent precision and stability in all conditions. Where others boast precision at the expense of stability, the Axis offers both. I don't think there's ever been a sled I've been able to ride as fast as this one on the trail. Turn-in is precise, bite is positive with the slightest hint of understeer, which actually helps keep the skis on the ground, and the chassis is completely predictable all through the corner, especially when transitioning from corner to corner in tighter situations. Unfortunately, there just isn't enough time for me to go over all the things I like about this sled and tell you all about its technological attributes. So I'll just end by saying this. The Axis Pro S Rush is the most impressive new sled introduction in many years. It's exceeded all of our expectations and it's now the lightest 800 in its class. Not bad for a sled's first year in production, don't you think? Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. The unique world of equipment, tools, and more. When you think of the Skidoo 1200 Fortec, what comes to mind? For me, it's reliability, industry-leading cutting-edge technology, and as with all sled heads, the need for more horsepower. No, Skidoo isn't boosting the 1200, but if you want to spend 5000 bucks, you can have it done. You'll throw reliability out the window, and good luck on resale, as nobody likes to touch non-turbo sleds that have been altered with forced induction. So the search for inexpensive power continues. With a four-stroke motor this sophisticated, the best way to keep stock reliability while also increasing horsepower is to let the motor breathe. And with MBRP, manufacturers of custom aftermarket exhaust located just a short 45 minutes away from Supertrax and Snowtrax World headquarters, I knew they'd have something in stock for us. MBRP only produce exhausts that make power. If it's not a performance advantage, they don't build it. To ensure they're always making ponies, every design is dyno tested and every exhaust is made to incredibly high standards, from laser cut parts to stainless steel construction. For the 1200 Fortec, MBRP has quite a nice pairing. Keeping in mind that MBRP pipes always make power, I think you're gonna be impressed with not only the power, but with the weight savings that we're gonna see on this install. The custom designed Fortec headers are laser cut and built out of a stainless steel casting to ensure durability over the years. Not only do they look aggressive, they perform with a dyno-proven 7 horsepower increase over the stock headers. Installation is straightforward, besides the cramped quarters, and goes together easily. To make this install complete, the stock, ridiculously heavy silencer is going to be tossed away, and a new, sleek, lightweight canister will be reinstalled. Installation lines up nicely and accepts the 3 into 1 headers. This new silencer is not only much sleeker in looks, it's a full 10 pounds lighter. And on any four-stroke sled, that kind of weight reduction is an advantage. On the power end of things, this can will net us a two horsepower increase, rounding out our total to nine horse. Finding power at a reasonable price on snowmobiles nowadays can be very hard to do, but at under $1,000 for the pair, MBRP makes this exhaust setup very, very easy. The install is straightforward, the performance is proven, and the gains are incredible. But what about sound? Just like all MBRP exhausts, the aggressive, low-end growl is included, but still manages to stay at a trail-legal 88 decibels at 4,000 RPM. You get all that goodness and still keep the neighbors happy. With Skidoo claiming over 130 horsepower out of the stock 1200 Fortec and many dyno reports that back that up, I can now expect to be running somewhere in the neighborhood of 145 horsepower. Can I feel it? Oh yeah! One of the most improved areas that is seat of the pants felt would be throttle response. It's much quicker to respond to throttle input, and while I always felt that the 1200 pulled like a ton of bricks at about 7900 RPM, 
It now gives me Arctic Cat 9000-like pull. I imagine the 10 pounds of weight that were shed are also aiding in the significant change. In my opinion, this is the best money that you can spend on a 1200 Fortec. Not only are you hugely increasing your performance, but you're also increasing your reliability with an exhaust system that's going to be here for years to come. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover. If you like this video, post a comment and tell us what you think. Then click on this link to subscribe to Snowtracks TV here on the YouTube channel.